Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is going to be a video about the unique and uh, pretty intense storm that will be upcoming in the future this weekend. Um, it will be an interesting storm, unique one for sure. Um, it won't be overly powerful, it won't be a monster, though it's definitely a unique storm. It's one we haven't seen in a while, of that format at least, that style. So, uh, yeah, I'll take you all along the journey of exploring this, talking about the snow totals, snow amounts from different models, and see what the National Weather Service girl has to say about that. So before we get into this, consider subscribing to this channel, consider liking this video. It really means a lot to me. I really appreciate each and every one of your, uh, your support. And um, also, remember, if you're a recurring viewer and you like watching this channel, consider, you know, remember to like the video, consider it, because that really helps out this channel. And if you're new, you're a new viewer, check out the channel and see for yourself if this channel is worthy of a subscription for you. So let's start off at the European model, the ECMWF. This is also, again, known as the European model. So right now the storm is actually uh, pretty far off the coast, and it's um, really the main energy from the system is still not even on land. So the models really hone in on uh, the details once the system is on, on shore, but the thing is that some of this energy will get transferred through the mountains quicker and uh, quicker than expected, and it's almost as if the storm never makes a full landfall on the United States. It goes into Canada, into parts of British Columbia, but there is a pretty strong uh, wave of precip that pushes into parts of Washington, Oregon, Northern California, and that really transpires into this system, which... Um, if you're hoping for a snow day of any sort, that does not seem likely as this one will occur at the ending part of Friday for most location. Even, you know, it starts really abruptly across uh, Kansas, Missouri, and Iowa, and Nebraska at around the earliest, earliest, I would say, probably around noon, maybe a little bit before, maybe in the morning hours of Friday. That's still not enough. Ideally, for a snow day, you'd need to have uh, the snow falling, falling several hours heavily before the start of school. And this one is, uh, at least that's a good thing. It will impact some evening travel, but it seems like for a good portion of the, uh, the area that will get impacted or later on in the evening, won't be dealing with the morning commute problems and you know sometimes a Friday morning commute can be really bad but unfortunately the evening is usually worse and that looks as if that one's going to get impacted for say locations like Minneapolis, uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, even say Chicago, the, the end of the uh, evening commute may get impacted. Notice it starts off very strong and it does continue through that you can see Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Northern Illinois and uh, notice that the ice could be actually pretty impactful southern uh, Iowa central Illinois Missouri seeing a little bit of ice out of that and that could actually lead to uh, a good uh, icing but again this storm looks to be progressive as it quickly transitions either to snow to rain or to uh, ice where it's snowing so it doesn't seem like the ice is really gonna stay for a long time over a certain area which really cuts on those ice accumulations and notice over this system what makes it really unique is uh, usually when we see a system that is powerful and a big winter storm we usually see uh, the low pressure whatever track it takes the heavy snow is on the northwest side of it and that's where usually the uh, I guess uh, the really strong heavy snow mounts happen while the low pressure is sitting out to the south and east severe weather or very heavy rain out in front of it and a little bit of snow out here but mainly the snow occurs on the back side this system is completely different it's sitting at around a Fargo Minnesota area um, and uh, Grand Forks, somewhere in that vicinity, uh, could obviously change, and then uh, the you know the general placement a few uh, few miles, but it generally will be in that area. Notice that a lot of the snows way out in front of it. I mean, a good portion of I would say majority of it, probably 85% of it, is way out here, and that is uh, actually surprising as this doesn't even seem to have the support for uh, such a strong snow event You're way out in front of it and notice behind it there isn't really much happening at all this system uh, I guess you could say it's in its developing phases but it really produces just a 
good amount of snow out in its first phases. Notice uh, for the Chicago area that transitions to rain and some freezing rain, uh, portions of Michigan, you will get snow in southern Michigan. I know I have several comments, southern Michigan, even northern Ohio, nor northern Indiana, you will get snow even possibly up to three to four inches, but it transitions to rain afterwards and that could be a little bit unfortunate. Uh, again, rain is not as good of a, a snow melter as you'd like to think. It usually does a decent job. It may, it may be melting a bit, but uh, usually warm temperatures are the things that melt it. And with this storm, warm temperatures are just really not going to be a thing. Um, they're going to be marginal. And basically what I mean is if you get three to four inches of snow, expect three to four to basically be staying on the ground. Um, it won't be doing much melting. Notice, however, if you were to look across the northeast, it delivers a quick thud of snow across New York, uh, Boston, Connecticut, Rhode Island. So the Europeans still show some uh, decent amounts for those locations. And let's show you now the total snowfall accumulations. Uh, the European is one of the, I guess, media models. I think the GFS has the highest snowfall amounts. But notice that it really does put out quite a bit, especially across the uh, the central Iowa and northern Wisconsin area, a general 6 to 9 inches of snow. 6 to 10 is a good estimate to put it at. And you can see, again, right there across Minneapolis up to 9, 10, possibly up to a foot, not, uh, not excluded. Portions of upper northeast, they already have a winter storm going on right now. So that's going to be cool. Uh, these, look, these amounts are underestimated by that. It looks as if some locations could get up to 8 to 9 to 10 inches of snow across uh, portions of New York. So that is uh, actually... A good thing as I've been getting many uh, reports or I guess fans writing, viewers writing in that uh, they haven't been seeing much snow across in upper New York State or Vermont or New Hampshire. Well, you know, you will get two in a row pretty close by and you can see the amounts will show that as up to a 16, 17, a foot and a half is expected in the next couple of days. And that does not where, that's not where this pattern ends. Um, it looks stormy and snowy afterwards. Notice four or five inches pretty uh, expected amounts. If we were to look at the National Weather Service, you could see winter storm watches are issued, wind chill uh, uh, advisories and wind chill warnings are also being issued across the northern Minnesota, uh, northern most of Minnesota, all of Minnesota, all of North Dakota, most of northern South Dakota, parts of northwestern Wisconsin, and then we have those winter storm warnings and winter weather advisories across the northeast with that first system, and then we'll start getting uh, advisories and watches and warnings with that second system. Again, that second system doesn't seem to be a big pro, severe weather maker at all. Uh, it seems as if it will be mainly focused uh, across the, it will mainly be focused on the snow, the system, and it won't really have much rain at all, which is, again, a further element which makes this system very unique. Let's go to a tropical tidbits. Let's look at the GFS model, which literally just came in a couple, um, you know, maybe 30 to 40 minutes ago. So fresh data. Let's look at this. We have that first snowstorm going to occur in the next couple of hours across the northeast, and it really intensifies off the coast. Doesn't really affect, though, the coastal areas, unfortunately for you. But again, we have this pretty large system. Gets quite a bit of moisture from the... Uh, even possibly the Pacific gets a little bit of that northern Pacific moisture and then this just really combines into a ultimate uh, system which again is very very unique and you can see the GFS actually develops it more than the European so probably has a little bit more heavier snow across this these areas as it almost develops a stronger low with that again that northwest orientation of that snow compared to the low where usually the heavier snow occurs at more moderate uh, or to intense rates Notice though, it doesn't really put out huge amounts for a, a northeast, but it weakens it. But definitely a big system for the Midwest. And again, the unique thing is that it's just so widespread. The snow amounts aren't, aren't focused over a certain area of a state or a certain state even for a matter of fact. You can see that the GFS puts out snow across a good portion of the eastern to northern United States. Um, again, this will most likely fall as ice, though some snowfall accumulations are expected. Uh, the G a GFS usually takes in a sleet accumulations and it counts them as snow. But I would say a general 6 to 9, 6 to 10 inches across Minnesota, Wisconsin, northern Iowa, and into possibly northern Illinois. Um, a little bit less from northern Illinois, but uh, 
Also, if you go further down, I would say three to four down to the Iowa Missouri border and into maybe even central Illinois if this system really uh, gets itself together. Southern Michigan, northern Ohio, northern Indiana, I would say three to four, maybe locally more of uh, a little bit of more of snow. Northern Pennsylvania also seeing a good half a foot out of this, and northeast seeing some decent amounts as well. We're just, let's look at some of the other uh, models, like the Canadian model. You can see the Canadian still shows heavier snow across the northern. Illinois area takes a little bit further south still generous amounts and again the widespreadness of the storm is really what makes the storm unique and quite frankly uh, rare and uh, it's just a, if you know that's what's the whole point of weather it's you'll never never know what's to come you may get a system that's really unique you may get a system that's really strong you may get a system that's just really classic of a nor'easter you know um there's just so many variations and you can see the canadian still brings a system further to the south not really allowing the rain to reach as far north as the other models will this scenario be right i'm really doubting it i think the more northern ones are more correct as it seems uh, the Canadian has been trending towards the northern solutions and by the way in case you're wondering yes it seems like we could be had looking at another system around the 24th 25th 23rd time frame um, next week it, it looks like a pretty big one also so we'll have to keep an eye out for that one let's quickly look at the NAM 12 km this is a high resolution North American model uh, it, that's what it stands for and uh, this one again is used for shorter range only goes out to 84 hours though I I really have not grown a liking to it it just uh, it doesn't have a good handle on most things however we still like to look at it and see if it points out any uh, major things you can see it does show that ice which could be a problem uh, that snow it takes a little bit more of a southerly track which is interesting but um, doesn't do much different and I advise you if the some of these snowfall amounts look higher across the south that's because of its ice event but it does have a pretty good handle on snow in the, in the Wichita uh, Oklahoma area which they have actually winter weather advisory they may see a little bit of snow and freezing rain which the other models may just underestimate and uh, again, freezing rain seems more of the b bigger concern for these areas, but uh, a 1 to 2, 1 to 3 inch amount of snow is definitely not out of the question either. So uh, that's basically all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. Consider liking this video. Consider subscribing to this channel. And I'll catch you all guys on the next episode. See ya. Bye.